When digging through history, we're used to seeing Europeans as evil colonialists who plundered everything in sight. But most of Europeans' population was poor farmers and innocent people, and what some Europeans suffered at the hands of Barbary pirates is simply unspeakable. Between the 16th and 19th centuries, pirates and slave traders from the North African Barbary states kidnapped, tortured, and exploited over 100 million people in Europe and North Africa, and the details of what they did to their slaves are stomach-turning. This is the full story of the Barbary pirates, their rise and fall, and their horrific methods. In the late 1800s, the United States Marine Corps decided to commemorate an extremely bloody battle in their new hymn. It starts with the following lyrics. From the halls of Montezuma to the shores of Tripoli. Tripoli, which is now the biggest city in Libya, refers to the battle between the Marine Corps and the infamous Barbary pirates. This was the beginning of the end for the Barbaries, but they had been terrorizing North Africa and Europe for 300 years. Yep, you heard right. Side note, Barbary has nothing to do with barbarian. It's an angelicized version of Berber, and it refers to the non-Arab locals in North Africa. The Berbery states included modern-day Algeria, Tunisia, Morocco, and Libya. Berbers were known as warriors and raiders who were super proficient on land, but in the late 1400s or early 1500s, they took to the sea, and from there, everything changed. Their group was always big and inclusive, as they were often accompanied by Muslim and Jewish refugees. They were on the run from Ferdinand and Isabella's Catholic Spain. But the Berbers weren't a bunch of humanitarian sea seeking to help refugees. They were in it for the money. This was a time of intense trade around the Mediterranean Sea. Spices, precious metals, gems, and textiles were carried from India and the Middle East into Europe. Europe was also sending raw materials, food, and wine to Asia by sea. The Berbers wanted the big money, and their main idea was to steal as much as they could from the coastal towns around the Mediterranean Sea and the ships heading to these destinations. Sadly, they soon discovered a product more sought after than any spice or gold, human slaves. Slavery didn't begin in Europe with the Barbary pirates. People had been enslaved since before the Roman Empire, and during the Roman expansion, thousands of people were kidnapped from freshly conquered territory. Franks, Germans, Slavs, Greeks, various people from the Balkans, Africans traded to Rome by Egypt, Jews from Israel, and more. In fact, if you were really rich in ancient and medieval Europe, you were most likely engaged in the slave trade too. The time slavery was normal far exceeds the few centuries it wasn't. Slavery was only abolished in 1807 in the UK, with the rest of Europe following shortly. After the mid-1400s, the Ottoman Empire became a brand new force taking over Europe and North Africa. It was slowly expanded around the Mediterranean Sea, conquering everything in sight, just like the Romans had done centuries before. In theory, the Ottoman Empire had also engulfed the Barbary states, but their pirates were so feared that the Ottomans never really tried to conquer them. They just wanted the Berbers to recognize the Ottoman Sultan as their leader. This worked just fine for the Berbers. Now they could sell their slaves straight to the Ottoman Empire's richest. Meanwhile, the Berber pirates grew and grew Group, recruiting anyone from mercenaries, poor people desperate to make some cash, and even European mercenaries with the same goal. First, they started attacking the south of the Mediterranean basin. Then they realized they could attack any town they wanted. Their brutality was unmatched, even in those dark times. The Burberry pirates left giant scars and incurable trauma to the people of Europe for centuries. Their constant attacks and extreme treacherous methods changed the way people lived forever. Now, they lived in constant fear. The pirates were so effective that they can be directly credited with the development of defensive forts on coastlines and European navies. If they wanted a European ship, they could easily take it from its captains. In 1625, the Burberry pirates raided the coastline of Cornwall in modern-day UK. After taking 60 people into slavery, Sir John Elliot, the Vice Admiral of Devon, said, The seas around England seemed theirs. Two years later, an enslaved Icelander by the name of Oliver Eggleston would describe the true horrors of what pirates did to their human cargo. The Westman Islands had been preparing for pirate attacks for years. This was norm for all coastal places in Europe. The island towns and villages had ships ready to flee and the people were always on alert. But in 1627, they heard a rumor that the pirates had retreated from the sea. So the Westman Islands full became careless, if only for a few months. On July 16, 1627, some people saw three ships approaching the south coast at dawn. People were soon called to the Danish merchant houses to organize their defense. No one was allowed to get out. People stayed in until late at night, but that's when they became restless. Some even showed some wishful thinking. Perhaps the three ships they'd seen were part of the Danish defense force sent to protect them. They weren't. They were the Burberry pirates, and they were biding their time until people got careless. When the people went home, they unleashed hell on the town. Within a few hours, 300 people were snatched and dragged onto three big boats. Once on land,
land, the pirates raided village after village at a speed no one was prepared for. No one could run fast enough. As if the sight of them wasn't terrifying enough, the pirates howled like wolves as they ran and attacked everyone in sight. The women were violated and the children were killed. In their eyes, they were too weak to make good slaves. One of the slaves would write, Only a few people who were strongest or had nothing to carry or did not pay attention to anyone else managed to avoid capture. I, with my weak group, was quickly taken. Some of my neighbors managed to escape quickly into the caves or down the cliffs. Some were able to gain their freedom again, but who exactly, I cannot tell, for I and my wife were amongst the first to be captured. When Oliver Eccleson and his wife resisted their capture, the pirates beat them with handles of their spears. To his shock, the men attacking them viciously were British. Reportedly while in the area, the Burberry pirates recruited British fishermen, and it was them who pointed the pirates at the well-hidden Westman Islands. The pirates were well organized in their attack. A group of 150 pirates carrying red banners crossed the island and attacked the Danish houses. Two other groups were in charge of kidnapping slaves. Anyone who resisted was killed on the spot. If they didn't die, they were taken into slavery. And when that was done, one of the pirate ships shot its cannons at the village. The churches and houses were reduced to ashes. Oliver would write about the next day. On Tuesday, as those of us already captured sat in the Danish house where we had been driven, the evil pirates gathered together everyone else whom they had taken, and in that crowd I saw my children. It was by now midday. The three houses where we were kept could no longer contain all the people, so the pirates ordered us to stand on the pavement in front of the houses. We were surrounded by these evil men. Oliver and his wife begged on their knees to the Turkish commander. The commander simply ignored them. Then, the pirates assessed which people were healthy enough to be slaves and took them to their ships. The slaves were beaten, flogged, and forced to row the small boats back to the ships. When the pirates on that ship saw us climb miserably aboard, they rejoiced. And this was only the beginning of their horror story. Once settled onto the ship, the commander called Oliver to the stern, where two pirates bound his hands and feet tightly together. The captain then beat me, striking and kicking me along my back while I screamed helplessly with the pain of it. I do not know how many blows he gave me, but he beat me as hard as he could until I was too hoarse to scream any longer. Then a man was brought forward who spoke German. He asked me if I knew about any money that might be anywhere. I said forcefully that I knew of none and that I wanted only that they beat me to death quickly and have it done. But the men didn't kill Oliver. They just dragged him back to the bow, all while laughing at him because he couldn't walk anymore. Oliver remembers the Turkish pirates as the most brutal. They would take pleasure in regularly torturing their Christian slaves. Dozens of the 240 Icelanders captured that day would die from these beatings. They'd be wrapped in cloth and thrown overboard. But that was just the first chapter. Then came the slave trade. On August 16th, a month after their capture, Oliver and the other slaves were dropped off in Algiers, where thousands of people gathered to watch. We Icelanders were separated from each other, friend from friend, children from their parents, and driven through the streets from one house to another to the marketplace, where we were put up for auction as if we were sheep or cattle. Meanwhile, Oliver's wife had given birth to their third child. Her poor baby was born into slavery, going straight to auction. Oliver's older son was 11 years old and was taken by the local king. Oliver describes a feeling of confusion and heartbreak that is safe to say most slaves felt at the time. What I saw in this place of evil people is difficult for me to describe because I was so disoriented and grief-stricken at the time. Luckily for Oliver, he was taken to the king's prison along with his wife and their two babies. Other slaves were forever separated from their loved ones as soon as they were taken off the ship. Oliver was kept in a different cell, but his wife was allowed to visit every now and then. Meanwhile, dozens more Icelanders died from the heat and dehydration that they were subjected to. To. On September 20th, though, Oliver was taken to his family one last time. He had just a few seconds to say goodbye to his wife and very sick babies before being given a safe conduct paper and put aboard an Italian ship. He was to be used as a messenger, but on that ship he was given no food or water. He barely survived, sharing water contaminated by animals. At one point, for lack of proper food and water, I was reduced to drinking water which a lion, a bear, an ostrich, and some monkeys and poultry had drunken from and befouled. Even so, I was glad. So thirsty was I. Oliver's story has a happy ending. He was taken back to the Westman Islands, where he was nursed back to health by the surviving friends and relatives in the village. Ten years later, he managed to pay his wife's ransom, and she returned to the island, but others were not so lucky. By the late 1600s, most people had fled from their coastal towns further inland. Many such towns remained deserted for decades. 
Anyone who stayed there didn't stand a chance. In one of their bloodiest raids, Burberry pirates raided the Western Ireland town of Baltimore, taking over 100 slaves and reduced the town to ashes. By 1640, up to 5,000 English people were captured and taken to Algiers, where they were sold at auctions. Meanwhile, the British Parliament created a committee for Algiers. It set up charities and united local fishing communities. Together, they would raise money to liberate the English slaves, but very few people were saved. First of all, a lot of them would die on the voyage to North Africa. They had almost no food and water, and the unsanitary conditions meant they could easily get an infection. If that's not horrible enough, many of them were beaten to a pulp, all for the pirates' amusement. By the time they made it to Algiers, they couldn't walk or even stand, and who would buy such a slave? Many of these were left to rot in a makeshift prison, and those who ended up being bought faced another long list of horrors. Men are often used as builders, forced to work for an inhumane amount of hours in the bright sun with little to no food and water. If they weren't builders, they would work in the mines or help build more ships to capture more slaves. Women often ended up slaves for rich Ottomans, and if they were considered unattractive, they would be sent to do manual labor in the fields or kitchens. Imagine being reduced to either an object of a man's desire or an object of labor. At night, all the slaves were thrown in overcrowded prisons called bagnios, but there was an even worse option for the slaves. They were kept by the Burberry pirates to work the oars. You see, the Berbers didn't have the high-tech ships that the Dutch and British conquerors of the time had. They used galleys that relied on slaves rowing constantly. The only sails galleys had were single square ones, so they weren't the main source of the ship's propulsion. The Berbers relied on slaves to do the rowing, and there was no fate worse than that. As a slave assigned to the oar, you simply weren't allowed to leave your spot. They were shackled to their seats and made to work almost without a break. They would eat, sleep, urinate, and defecate in the same spot. Oh, by the way, they would only eat fish fish remains and rotten vegetables, and the constant friction of the bare skin against the ship meant most of these people had open wounds on their bodies every single day. Imagine living like this. And if they put up a fight with the commanders, they would get taken upstairs and get whipped. They wouldn't even get a clean death. After a few whips and a proper beating, the slave would just get taken back to work. There was no escape, just seemingly endless pain. The galley slaves would die from starvation, dehydration, or infections within a few years. Some of them would develop gangrene and maggots inside their bodies while they were still alive. It's hard to even fathom the number of people affected by the Burberry pirates. Between 1609 and 1660 only, 466 English ships were lost. That's just the English ones. People were shocked to see their own people rain hell on them. In the early 1600s, the English Burberry pirate Jack Ward was one of the most fearsome captains. Another famous Burberry pirate was Saida Alhura. She was an Arab Muslim woman, not a Berber, and she would sell women into the slave trade knowing all too well what fate awaited them. It made no sense that these people would join the Berbers from a different culture and exploit people from their own homes. But, well, when you have no moral backbone, you just follow the cash. And the slave trade was extremely lucrative at the time. Another famous captain was Haratin Barbosa, aka Redbeard. He was an Ottoman admiral in the 1400s. He and his brother became famous for destroying Spanish and Portuguese ships that were threatening the North African communities. His fierce fighting style helped him strengthen a relationship with Suleiman the Magnificent, the Ottoman Empire Sultan. But no matter how much political power he gained, he was still a pirate at heart pillaging whichever place he sailed to. According to history professor Robert C. Davis, at least 1.5 million Europeans were taken into slavery by the Burberry pirates. Among the famous people taken by the Burberry pirates was Miguel de Carvantes, who would reach worldwide stardom after his death for his now classic book, Don Quixote. Miguel was captured by the Berbers and kept a slave in Algiers between 1575 and 1580. That year, the Trinitarian Catholics raised money together with his parents to pay his ransom and liberate him. Miguel was one of the lucky ones whose families could afford to pay a ransom. Plus, it was the 1500s. Information didn't reach the slaves' loved ones that easily. Some people saw their partners, parents, or children disappear, and they never heard from them since. But all things must come to an end. The Burberry Pirates' three-century-long reign of terror would go up in flames. By the mid-1600s, many European nations had declared open war on the Berbers. Sadly, the governments were less occupied with the slave trade than the fact that the pirates were stealing their goods olive oil, cotton, wine, and spices. During the 1700s, there were numerous battles between European forces such as the English, Dutch, French, and Spanish, 
and the pirates. At the beginning of the 1800s, the United States got involved in the fight too. There were two U.S. Burberry Wars between 1801 and 1805, then in 1815. By the 19th century, pirate activity had declined, but Burberry pirates continued to demand tribute from American merchant vessels in the Mediterranean. Refusal to pay would mean pirates would capture American ships and goods and enslave their crew members. After Thomas Jefferson became president in the U.S. in March 1801, he sent the U.S. naval fleet to the Mediterranean to put an end to the Berber pirates. The fleet bombarded numerous fortified cities in present-day Libya, Tunisia, and Algiers, ultimately extracting concessions of safe conduct from the Burberry states and ending the war. By 1815, the combined forces of the U.S., Netherlands, and Sweden brought a long-awaited end to the Burberry pirates. Over 4,000 Christian lives were liberated. However, it would be a long time before the wounds they left were healed. Millions of people had been killed or physically or emotionally destroyed by the pirates. Many towns were reduced to ashes or abandoned for good as people fled for their lives. Thousands of children were taken by the Ottomans, raised Muslim, and kept as slaves by rich folk who saw them as tools. They would never reunite with their families. The Berber slave trade went hand in hand with the infamous Atlantic slave trade. The pirates influenced the Europeans who took African slaves to America by the millions. Indeed, the Berber pirates' legacy is a bloody one. Their brutality and complete disregard for human life only went to inspire other people to do the same. The slave trade went on for a long Long time, but the Berbers took it to another level, and it would take centuries for slavery to be abolished across the globe. Hey, thanks for watching. What do you think about the Burberry Pirates? Do you know of any other brutal pirates? Let me know in the comments section. And before you go, make sure you like, subscribe, and hit that bell button so you never miss another episode. See you all next time.